Hello, my name is Russ Miller. I live in Flagstaff, Arizona, and I'm the founder of Creation Evolution and Science Ministries. I think it's important that Christians understand the differences between the intelligent design movement and biblical creationism. So right now, because the Bible tells us that my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, we're going to take a look comparing the intelligent design movement to naturalistic Darwinism and to biblical creationism. There are really only three viable choices. Either the biblical God created the world exactly like he says he did, or an unknown entity created the world, or the world evolved all on its own by random chance processes. The intelligent design movement is based on observable, intentional design in things. Intelligent design is a scientific theory. ID looks at specified complexity which is best explained as a result of an intelligent cause, not by naturalistic random processes. Intelligent design is actually wanting to allow scientific findings to guide conclusions, rather than having to force fit discoveries through a preconceived worldview, as scientists have had to done through the Darwinian secular naturalistic view for the past 50 plus years. Biblical creationism is based on the belief that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Creationists believe that in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. And that God judged his creation due to man's sin with a global flood. Naturalism is simply atheistic materialism, a religious philosophy that matter is all there is. Naturalism teaches that life itself and all systems from finely, the finely tuned universe to complex biological systems evolved on their own by purely naturalistic means over long, long periods of time. Science used to be known as knowledge derived from the observation, study, and testing of evidence. So we could test and study things and develop laws and principles that led to lots of great improvements from space shuttles and airplanes and cars to penicillin and more in our world today. Unfortunately, science has been taken over and by the naturalists and they've redefined it to fit their ideological naturalistic beliefs. It's now the study of naturally occurring phenomena. In other words, their religious belief. The New York Times were warned that the ID movement might change the definition of science itself so that it is not restricted to the study of natural phenomena. Well, this admits that science currently is restricted to the belief in naturalistic phenomena. In other words, to the humanistic, secular, materialistic worldview. The problem here that undermines science is that naturalism is not a scientific theory. It is a religious belief, a religious philosophy. A testable hypothesis is supposed to be realistic in nature. It's supposed to be predictable, and it's also supposed to be possible to be refuted. It has to be refutable. Well, let's look at the predictions and the refutability of intelligent design, of naturalistic Darwinism, and of biblical creationism. Intelligent design predicts that biology will find that organisms have specified an irreducible complexity. Intelligence leaves behind a mark, as if you walk on a beach, you leave behind your footprints, or if you touch something, you leave behind your fingerprints. Specified and irreducible complexity are such fingerprints of intelligent design. Let's define specified complexity. If an event exhibits both specification showing an independent pattern, in other words, like a, a marksman shooting at a target and constantly hitting what he's aimed at, it shows specified complexity. It was designed for this outcome. If it shows complexity that's not readily repeated by random chance in a natural setting, in other words, it was purposely designed, it shows specified complexity that naturalism cannot alone attest for. Well, let's define irreducible complexity. When a functioning system is made of interrelated parts, if any one of those parts is missing, damaged, or not there in the correct order at the very start, if the entire system would then fail, then it exhibits irreducible complexity. 
Example of irreducible complexity would be our immune system. Various bacteria and viruses are trying to devour you at this very moment. And if it weren't for your immune system, they would succeed. Our immune system consists of billions of bone marrow cells and proteins and antibodies, and it's known as irreducibly complex. If any of those systems were to fail from the start, you would die shortly. Antibodies identify invaders from your normal body cells, but they can only bind to one specific type of virus or bacteria. Therefore, you have billions of different antibodies in your system, each made by its own cell in your bone marrow. Now, to do this, the antibody remains attached to its production cell, otherwise they get separated in your body. Now, when the specific invader that that particular antibody was designed to deal with shows up, that antibody must inform the production cell to mass produce the antibody. Now, once it does, it does this by bonding to the invader. A piece of the invader is attached to a specific protein molecule, which then attaches itself to a helper cell, which then attaches itself to another protein, and on and on this goes until the production cell gets the message to mass produce the antibody. If any one of those pieces was not there from the very start, the entire system would fail. It's irreducibly complex. Then the cell produces the specialized plasma cells that are not attached to the cell so that they can travel throughout your body and hunt down and destroy that invader. The immune system exhibits both specified and irreducible complexity. It is obviously designed for this specific purpose. Intelligent design meets its own key criteria. Well, what about refutability? If it could be proven that materialistic means alone could account for the complex biological systems we see today, the intelligent design movement would be refuted. So it's totally refutable. It's simply a fact that human intelligence is the only known mechanism for causing various parts to come together to form a complex machine. That's an example of intelligent design. In fact, many branches of science have been using intelligent design for years now. When an archaeologist finds a stone arrowhead laying on the ground, he doesn't assume it evolved over millions of years of rain erosion. Why not? It exhibits too much specified complexity. It was designed for a purpose. Intelligent design offers a scientific theory employing specified complexity as a reliable criteria for detecting design in repeatable, observable examples. These are scientific facts that qualify ID as a scientific field of study. So why isn't it taken into the schools as science? Because of the redefinition of the word science to fit only naturally occurring phenomena. ID shows that there had to be intelligence behind these things. And although you could show thousands or millions of examples that it's a scientific fact, the courts rule it as being non-scientific, not fitting the new definition of the word. Mind-boggling. The Bible says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, so that they are without excuse. Who's going to be without excuse? Those that don't accept the biblical creator's creation. The evidence of our creator is enough to get a person condemned should we choose to willingly be ignorant of it. But recognizing design alone does not get a person reunited with our creator. Biblical creationists use special revelation through the gospel message and through the rest of Scripture with general revelation, in other words, scientific facts found throughout the creation, to support that the Bible is indeed the inspired Word of God, word for word and cover to cover, leading folks to put their faith and trust in the authoritative Word of our Creator, Redeemer, and Savior, Lord Jesus the Christ. Biblical creationism predicts that biology will find that plants and animals will only reproduce after their own kind, with variations occurring but only within the same kind of plant or animal. 
Biblical creationism also predicts that geology will find evidences of a global catastrophic aqueous event, a global flood. These are reliable empirical criteria of biblical creation. The Bible tells us that God created every living creature after their kind. The term after their kind is used ten times in the book of Genesis. These are micro-adaptations, kinds bringing forth after their own kind. Dogs will produce dogs, even with variation within the dogs. Dogs will only bring forth dogs after their own kind. These are both biblical and scientific facts where millions of examples could be shown. Biblical creationism meets this key criteria. The Bible says, whereby the world that was being overflowed with water perished. Things must be buried quickly to become fossils, otherwise they rot away or get eaten by scavengers. Polystrata fossils are great proof of the global flood. We're told by secularists that the strata layers form slowly over billions of years, but we find polystrata fossils that traverse multiple strata layers, proving that the layers had to have formed quickly during a massive aqueous event. AMS testing has shown that carbon-14, which is measured in carbon dating, and scientists agree should decay away in measurable amounts in about 70,000 years or so, and so there's no argument, let's say 200,000 years. C14 should be completely gone in measurable amounts in 200,000 years. And yet recent testing on the layers, which secularists say are up to 600 million years old, the fossil bearing layers, all still contain carbon-14 from the top layer all the way down to the bottom layer. That proves those layers can only be a few thousand years old at the most. And even better from a biblical standpoint is the amount of carbon-14, the range of amount from the top layer all the way to the bottom. And remember, it's supposed to decay away over time. It's in the same range of amount from the top layers to the bottom. That proves that all those fossil-bearing layers were laid down in the same event and only a global flood can viably explain that. Biblical creationism once again meets its key criteria. Well, what about the refutability of biblical creationism? Though it's not a science book, scripture accounts claim that plants and animals will bring forth after their kind and that there was a global flood. If the observable evidences do not support these claims, biblical creation would be refuted. Biblical creationism is refutable. It is not refuted because it is true. Naturalism assumes that Darwinism is a scientific fact, but Darwinism is a religious belief. Darwinism predicts that biology will find organisms adding new and beneficial data to the existing gene pool to cause them to evolve into other creatures. They also predict that geology will find the fossil record filled with millions of transitional kinds, missing links, if you will, of one kind slowly evolving into the next kind. These would be reliable empirical criteria of naturalistic Darwinism. However, increasing genetic information is yet another major problem for Darwinists. Real science knows of no example of nature being able to add appreciable amounts of new and beneficial genetic information to an existing gene pool. If Darwinism were true, they should find millions of examples. They have no viable examples to show. Mutations, which they say add the uh, information today in neo-Darwinism, Mutations, though, are always weaker because mutations are caused by the sorting or loss of genetic information, not by the creation of new and beneficial genetic information. So they are always weaker than their parent form. And in free competition in nature, they are eliminated by natural selection. So while we're being falsely taught today that mutations plus natural selection leads to Darwinian evolution, in real science, based upon millions of observations, what we find is that gene depletion, the loss of information, plus natural selection is what prevents Darwinism from being possible. Darwinism fails this key criteria. 
but the textbooks show these evolutionary trees of life with the supposed common ancestor at the bottom branching off into everything on Earth. But these drawings don't prove evolution. They need millions of missing links to make up each one of those colorful branches. Yet today, as of today, there's not a single missing link of any kind that has been found that will hold up to scientific scrutiny. They should find millions, they find zero. If my theory be true, stated Darwin, millions of missing links should be found. Darwinian evolution fails its own critical criteria. The failed predictions of Darwinism refute naturalism. Well, what about refutability? It needs to be refutable to be scientific, correct? Well, naturalistic Darwinism, keep in mind, is the religious foundation for humanism, and the secular humanists own the educational systems and the scientific establishments. They argue that unless every conceivable possibility that could seemingly support materialistic causes can be proven impossible, no matter how improbable those might be, like maybe aliens dropped us off so we can't test and study it, that only their philosophy can be considered. Materialistic evolutionists force all opposing views to prove a negative which is impossible, making naturalism a non-refutable religious belief, not science. Naturalism is non-refutable and non-scientific. So a quick review of this shows that intelligent design is a scientific theory which meets its predictions, is repeatable and refutable. Biblical creationism is a religious-based theory which meets its predictions and is refutable. Naturalism is a religious-based theory which fails its own predictions and has been made non-refutable, undermining scientific education and scientific research and the faith of billions of people. It's important for Christians to understand the difference between the ID movement and biblical creation, thus true Christianity. Here are what I perceive as the strengths and the weaknesses of the intelligent design movement. First of all, realize it's completely false when someone tries to say that the intelligent design movement is about getting the biblical creator back into the school systems. First of all, not everyone in the ID movement is a creationist, much less a biblical creationist. Many of the ID leaders believe in evolution. They just don't believe in atheistic, naturalistic evolution all on its own. And while all creationists believe in an intelligent designer, not all creationists are Christians. There are many creation accounts that are not based on the biblical accounts. I like to say that all Christians are creationists, but not every creationist is a Christian. New Agers, uh, Muslims, Hindus, Deists, Agnostics, Progressive Creationists, Theistic Evolutionists, etc. are all fine with the ID movement findings. Those who claim that aliens dropped us off are perfectly fine with the ID movement findings. All these different groups just claim that the intelligent designer is, of course, the deity that they worship. This uh, editorial cartoon was trying to make fun of, of the ID movement, but they actually hit the nail on the head, one nation under intelligent designer. The only group that is threatened by the intelligent design movement is atheistic, naturalistic Darwinists. Any other group that believes in a deity should be fine with the ID findings. To say that the ID movement is trying to get the Christian God back in the schools is simply propaganda being put forth by those whose religious dogma is beginning to lose its hold on the school systems because of the overwhelming evidence is coming out against it. Some other perceived strengths of the ID movement include the ID movement has developed many materials that are very useful in strengthening the arguments for biblical creation. They've got some great books and DVDs, etc. Also, the ID movement has modernized many issues that biblical creationists use as well. We've talked for years of signs of design, but they've put this into a more scientifically viable category called specified complexity. Biblical creationists used to talk about things being too complicated to form slowly, and the ID movement has specified that as irreducible complexity. 
The ID movement has also successfully focused attention on some of the inherent weaknesses of Darwinian naturalistic evolutionism. And after 150 years of study, Darwinism fails to explain the origin of life, the genetic code, molecular machines, arrival of complex biological systems, and on and on we can go. The ID movement has helped to expose Darwinism for the false religious belief that it is. It's also attempting to free the sciences so they can return to the unbiased gathering of knowledge which has been undermined by the naturalistic teachings. Today, if a science doesn't toe the evolutionary line, they will probably never get a degree, or it will be very difficult for them. If they get a degree, they may not be able to get a job. If they get a job, they're not going to get promoted. They won't get grant money to do research with. It, on and on it goes. They won't get their papers published. In other words, their career would be finished. Louis Pasteur, Sir Isaac Newton, and other great scientists that are all creationists wouldn't even be able to get published today. The ID movement is attempting to promote academic freedom. Naturalistic Darwinism has taken over and undermined our educational systems and educational freedom. Competing hypotheses have been banned from schools. Many school districts won't even allow their kids to be shown the weaknesses of the Darwinian theory. That is certainly not science. This is humanistic indoctrination and is undermining scientific education. Now, perceived weaknesses of the ID movement include that while pointing out the failings of naturalistic Darwinism, especially in biology, many in the ID movement support anti-biblical findings in other fields of science that are themselves based on naturalistic presuppositions, especially in geology. While many of the ID movement leaders are not Christians, others are even openly hostile to biblical creation. And many of them reject various Christian tenets like original sin, the fall, the global flood, etc. I predict that should the ID movement succeed, some of the strongest opponents to the biblical designer and certainly to the biblical creation will probably arise from the ID movement leadership ranks. Other weaknesses include that the acceptance of ID may very well lead to an increase in non-biblical forms of creation beliefs, such as the New Age movement or Hinduism, and to even more compromised positions within the Christian church itself. Christianity Today came out and has called for Christians to stop attacking Darwinism, start supporting intelligent design, and begin attacking young earth creationists. Mind-boggling. Why would they suggest that people attack Christians who believe the Word of God? Because of compromise with secular philosophies, especially trying to fit millions and billions of years of death and suffering into God's Word before man, undermining original sin, the resulting separation, and the very gospel of, the, of Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about this. It, the Bible tells us among the chief rulers, many believed in Jesus, but they did not confess him because they preferred the praise of men over the praise of God. Many people see the truth of biblical creation, even within the church, but they won't support it because they don't want to seem out of touch with all the millions of years scientific teachings. Compromise has always been one of Satan's tools to undermine real Christianity. And today we see that about 90% of accredited Christian colleges and about the same percentage of seminaries are teaching old earth philosophies to tomorrow's Christian leaders. And studies say half of folks in church today believe in evolution or millions of years. And by the way, I'm not attacking them. I hear, I'm here to help them if they're really seeking the truth. I used to be a theistic evolutionist myself, thinking God used evolution and millions of years of death and suffering until I saw a creation speaker myself. Jesus says that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. Secular humanists have a stranglehold on the educational and the scientific establishments, and humanists rule out anything that's not naturalistic 
as being non-scientific. True theories come from hypotheses which are supposed to be built on existing evidence. Darwin, with zero evidence of Darwinian macroevolution, made a great observation of microadaptations, finches producing finches, which we know now is caused by the sorting or loss of their genetic data. But he thought that these changes would eventually lead into non-finches. He was just wrong in his assumptions. Only in the past 20 years has the truth really started to come out. And the burden of proof is starting to fall on humanists, and this has them screaming bloody murder. This from the New York Times. Two science groups refuse to let Kansas schools use their evolution papers because Kansas had approved letting kids see some of the weaknesses in the Darwinian theory. That is simply blackmail to support their religious belief. This from the CNN Student News. In Kansas, fighting over the teaching of the weaknesses, weaknesses of evolution, Liz Craig, a board member of the anti-intelligent design group Kansas Citizens for Science, stated, portray the ID advocates in the harshest light possible as evangelical activists, ignoramuses, unprincipled bullies. Well, who's being the unprincipled bully, might I ask? And let me point out that name-calling and suppression of the facts is the last bastion for those who have no evidence to back up their religious beliefs that they are teaching as if they were science. Those who stand up to the reigning religious dogma of naturalistic Darwinism face serious repercussions. One molecular bi uh, biologist at George Mason University was barred from teaching because they, she just mentioned intelligent design in one of her classes. As intended by the reigning religious dogma, others skeptical to naturalism remain fearfully silent, not wanting their careers to go up in smoke. Darwin stated in Origin of the Species that a fair result can be obtained only by fully stating and balancing the facts and arguments on both sides of the equation. Well, it's long past due that naturalistic Darwinism be compared with competing hypotheses and with its own weaknesses. As the evidence against Darwinism continues to mount, expect more threats, more false claims, and more hypothetical theories to cover its collapse. Once again, intelligent design is a scientific theory which meets its predictions, is repeatable and refutable. Biblical creationism is a religious-based theory which meets its own predictions and is refutable. Naturalism is a religious-based philosophy which fails its own key predictions and has made itself non-refutable. It is undermining scientific research and scientific education and the faith of billions of people around the world. I hope and I pray that this information will be a blessing to you and to those you love. Let me end this with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the information you've given us to share with others. I hope and I pray that this information will strengthen people's faith and clarify some key issues in their minds. It is in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen.